In this video, I'm going to teach you how to correctly pressure an opponent's box in Fortnite. I'm gonna start out by showing you a couple scenarios in creative and then giving you some in-game examples at the end. Timestamps down below, let's hop into it. Let's pretend that this bot is an opponent and he is boxed up in brick, okay? What are the ways that he can attack me? He can either double edit up at me and take a pump shot, or he can jump out either of these sides and go for a side jump. So when I start to pressure this opponent, what I do is I build cones around and then I smack on this cone and I get ready to build a wall. I always build a wall after getting the cone and then I go off to the side. And I start smacking, but I'm waiting because he could edit up at me any second. If he does that, I reset my wall, edit a window, peak shot. But let's say the opponent has two boxes built now. So let's say he's sitting in these boxes here and I'm going to pressure. One, he can edit from either of these sides. Let's say I don't even know which side he's in. I need to make sure I'm safe when starting to pressure here. So first, I'm gonna build a double edit here, build walls around. You could even build walls behind you if you're afraid of getting shot by a third party. But then, let's say I wanna smack on this wall. I can edit like this. If he edits on me, I just reset. But let's say I wanna edit here. I can go for this. I just have to be aware he could mantle up the back and go for a pump. This is how I approach a box. I always block off all the angles of danger before I start to pressure. Let's say the opponent is boxed right here and I want to pressure from just outside his wall instead of from above. What do I do here? I build this wall because he could edit this and take a peek on me at any moment. So I build that wall. I build right here so he can't ramp over me. I build a wall to my side in case he edits that wall and goes for a shot and a cone in that box. Why do I do all this? To protect myself. I know he can still edit from the top. If I see him flip this cone up, that probably means he's going up and I can build a wall there, edit the wall and take a shot. So I just start smacking this wall, pulling out my shotgun. Eventually I get the wall, edit a peek, peek shot, boom. How do I even start to pressure this? Well, first of all, this is typically the kind of fight you don't want to take just because this player is playing so passive to the point where it can grief you. Let's say I want to focus on this build right here. Then I'll do all of this. See, if he double edits up here, I can just go behind this wall, take a peek shot. If he double edits up those back walls, I have these walls as protection. I got to be ready because he could mantle up the back here and surprise me from above. But realistically, when you're fighting a player like this, they're just gonna keep on reboxing on the same layer. So I start pressuring here. And basically at this point, I know by taking these tops, it's not gonna do too much. But let's say when I get that top, he resets these walls. I can jump down and go for a quick wall take. If I don't get it, I jump back up. Start to get doubles from a ton of different angles, protecting yourself while you get the attack going. And once you get enough doubles, like once I get this here, He's typically not gonna go back to this box because I have doubles there. If he does, I can get a quick shot on him. A lot of times they're gonna go out the side and that's why you have this double here. If they go out that side, boom, you have a shot. And you can drop down here, get another shot. A lot of times they'll edit here, they'll see you have the doubles, so they'll go back in this box and try to go out a different side. And then boom, you just immediately race them to that side. Once you get like two doubles on them, that's your chance to go for pre-boxes. You just have to start slowly attacking and make sure you're building these walls to block your angles while you attack. And once you get the walls, you set up a good peek. Now we're gonna be going over a couple fights from recent tournaments. Tournament players play boxes all the time, so it's so important to learn how to attack. I get a health advantage on this player to start, which puts him into the defensive mode and he starts to play boxes. I immediately get off to the left side of his box. Notice how there's a ramp against his wall. In this type of situation, a lot of players will just jump in using that ramp. I make him think I'm going to jump in his box, but I'm really watching him to see which direction he's going. I see him place the ramp so I know he's going upwards and I try to get a wall and ramp on him, but it was a little bit laggy so I didn't get it. He boxes up again and I put a ramp in his box when I break the wall. I immediately look to box the player in two separate directions so I have a higher chance of getting him. If I would have stayed above the box, this would have been a perfect play. We end up restarting the fight. He's down by the vault here and I pressure very carefully. I use this wall in front of me as a right hand peek. He only has one way he can attack me and it's by jumping up that little staircase. So if he goes for counter damage, I have a free kill. Sure enough, that's exactly what he does. I just keep pretending like I'm pressuring and then pulling out my shotgun and I get a free kill. The next clip, I have a health advantage here. 
and I notice there's a third party spraying from the east. So this player underneath me is feeling a lot of pressure, but I gotta make sure I'm blocking my angles while pushing up. Super simple example, I just built a wall to block off that third party while I pressured from above and got the kill. This next fight is an interesting example, something I haven't talked about in the video at all. It starts out, I get a health advantage, so I'm looking to keep the pressure on. I run directly up against this opponent's wall. The reason is he has his ramp flipped up. So if he was gonna take an edit on me, he would have to reset the cone and edit the wall. So as soon as I see him reset the cone, I'm gonna pull my shotgun out. One other thing to note if you're pressuring directly against someone's wall is if their wall is weak, if they edit that wall, it's gonna be one shot. If the wall was fully built and they edit the wall, it's not one shot. Knowing that information, I knew if he made an edit on me, I could just shoot the wall once, get it back. So I'm not at danger being up against his wall here. After dealing some damage, I immediately drag cones into the box he was headed. That way I have some peace control on him. He ends up repositioning up layers, and I immediately follow him, get on his wall, and I do that trick from earlier where I have a ramp behind me and it looks like I'm gonna jump in his box. I did that and immediately repositioned to a different angle in hopes that he would rebox from feeling scared that I was gonna jump in. Then notice here I did that trick where he reset his metal wall when it wasn't fully built. So it was one shot, both of his walls here were one shot. So I was just able to keep the pressure on heavy and I got the kill. In this next clip, I'm finally applying some of that stuff that we talked about at the start of the video, where I'm blocking off angles of danger. It starts out where I get a health advantage here. Once I got that health advantage, I know I need to get the pressure on, get on his wall. So eventually I find him here, and I'm just holding my pump out in case he edits. A lot of lower level players will set up a bad peak immediately, but I stand far enough back where I could build a floor to block his shot if he set up a good peak. I'm always prepared for any play they can make. He wasn't making a play, so I set up up the protective push that I was talking about earlier, where I get off to the left, build a wall so he can't edit on me from the left, and a wall on my right so he can't piece me. I use that safe push to start the pressure, and then he ends up repositioning, resetting a wall. I knew that wall was one shot, so I just got in. The biggest thing you should be learning from these fights is how to have a plan for any move they can make. Whether it be shooting a weak wall if they make an edit, or having angles blocked so they can't set up right hand peaks, never give them an opportunity to make a play on you. This was the fight as I got third partied from the previous one, and this player just never had a chance. I'm playing around his tops, but never giving him a chance to actually shoot me. These last three fights are from the duo cash cup with Trey, which is coming to the main channel soon. I started out by pinching the duo between me and my duo. I'm pressuring the further guy, and I'm blocking all my angles to start, building walls around me where he could possibly go for edits, stuff like that. But the guy's duo builds up over top of me, so I have to build up, and we just start spraying at him from two directions, and it leads to a free kill. We do the same thing to the second player, just get on opposite sides and finish the fight. The next fight, this team has four boxes built. I'm pushing up slowly, trying to figure out exactly where they are. This is a perfect example of why you need to build walls when you're pressuring an opponent's floor. A lot of times they go for that instant edit up, and if I didn't build that wall, I would have got double pumped or peace controlled and full boxed. I use the wall that I built as a right hand peak and try to get some damage dealt, but he just barely blocked it. As soon as they reset that metal floor, what have we learned? It's one shot. So I'm able to break it and get the wall in between me and the enemy. Trey was pressuring from the other side, so I dropped down and went for an attack, but they countered it pretty nicely, so I had to jump on out of there. And then once Trey got more pressure applied, that's when I jump back in and start attacking from the back. Another good example of pinching the enemies and attacking a 4x4. That's all I got for this video. Attacking boxes is such a complicated topic, so I hope this helps a little bit. I might do a part two when I get more in-game examples. If that's something you guys want to see, let me know down below. New creative map coming out later this week, so stay tuned. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.